AP Environmental Science students. In today's screencast, we're going to continue talking about Chapter 3, which is ecosystems, what are they, and how do they work. All of today's notes are based off of Living in the Environment, the 16th edition, by Miller and Spoolman. So, Section 3.2 is what keeps us and other organisms alive. The main idea here is that life is sustained by the flow of energy from the sun through the biosphere, the cycling of nutrients within the biosphere, and gravity. I am going to stop it because... Hello, AP Environmental Science students. In today's screencast, we're going to continue talking about Chapter 3, which is ecosystems, what are they, and how do they work. All of today's notes are based off of Living in the Environment, the 16th edition, by Miller and Spoolman. So, Chapter 3, Section 2, the main idea is what keeps us and other organisms alive. The key idea here is that life is sustained by the flow of energy from the sun through the biosphere, the cycling of nutrients within the biosphere, and gravity. So there are four major components to Earth's life support system. The first of those components is the atmosphere. Our next unit, Unit 3, we are going to go much more into depth into the atmosphere, but some basics you need to know for this unit is that the atmosphere is a thin, spherical envelope of gas that surrounds the Earth's surface. It's broken up into four to five layers that will go into all five when we get to our unit three. But for right now, I want you to know the troposphere, which is the layer of the atmosphere that contains the air we breathe and is where our weather occurs. It extends about four miles above the surface of the Earth. This is where we keep a lot of our greenhouse gases. Um, these are gases that trap in heat from the sun and warm the lower atmosphere, making it um, viable for us to live on planet Earth. Greenhouse gases include things like CO2, water vapor, methane, which is CH4, and nitrous oxide. The second layer I want you to know for this unit is the stratosphere. And this layer contains our ozone, or O3. And its job is to filter out most of the sun's harmful UV rays. It's basically our global sunscreen. It helps to prevent things like skin cancer and cataracts. The other three components of our life support system is the hydrosphere, which is all the water on or near the Earth's surface. And when we talk about water, we're talking about things in liquid form, solid form, or ice, and in gaseous form, so our water vapor. Geosphere consists of the Earth's hot core, the mantle, and the thin outer crust. Both hydrosphere and geosphere are going to be their own units that we're going to go into a lot more depth in both of those areas. And then the last one is the biosphere, and that's what we're talking about right now. And those are the living things found in the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and the geosphere. Life exists on land and in water. That's kind of an obvious idea. One of these major ways that we break up the life on land is in biomes. Um, and the biomes are large regions such as forests, deserts, and grasslands with distinct climates and certain species and vegetation. Um, that are adapted to them. Chapter 7, which is part of this unit, is, goes a lot more in depth into biomes, so we'll get to that eventually um, later this semester. There are also aquatic life zones. So these are marine and freshwater portions of our biosphere. Freshwater is lakes and streams. It's about 2% of all of the water found on Earth, while ocean and marine um, zones uh, 71% of all of our water, and that includes things like open ocean, coral reefs, and coastal estuaries. There are three factors that sustain life on Earth. The first factor is the one-way flow of high-quality energy from the sun through living organisms in their feeding interactions into the environment as low-quality energy. Two, there is a cycling of matter or nutrients, and three, gravity. Gravity is super important because it allows the planet to hold on to its atmosphere and helps enable the movement and cycling of materials. So what happens to all this solar energy that reaches the Earth? The energy from the sun reaches the Earth in the form of electromagnetic waves, and these are composed of visible light, UV or ultraviolet radiation, and heat or infrared radiation. All of this radiation is then does one of six things. First, it's either absorbed by the ozone. So like I said, that O3 absorbs a lot of the UV radiation so and prevents things like skin cancer. It can help to generate winds. 
It's used for photosynthesis by our plants. It's absorbed by the Earth's surface. It's reflected back by the Earth's surface. Or it's radiated by the atmosphere as heat. So here's a diagram kind of showing all of those things I discussed. And uh, so what happens, uh, again, to that solar energy? We've got to talk about the greenhouse effect. So our natural greenhouse effect is a good thing because our Earth naturally has these gases that trap and heat from the sun. If we didn't have these gases, our planet would be too cold for life to exist. Therefore, we need greenhouse gases. But the problem is, and where the bad connotation with greenhouse gases is, is when they build up too much, our atmosphere starts to hold in too much heat, and that's what leads to climate change or global warming. So if we take a look at this diagram, our natural greenhouse effect, this is good. This is what we want. The solar radiation comes, our re-radiated heat is trapped by our ozone and heats up the earth to an appropriate temperature that humans, living things, animals, all of our species can actually survive at. However, when we have human enhanced greenhouse effects because we create uh, more greenhouse gases by burning fossil fuels, it holds in more of our heat and it heats up our overall temperature of our planet.